For the next part of the counter items, we're going to have to bring one of the, the test lights that we created earlier and we tested with on the painting, just closer to the counter. There we go. Okay. So we're going to select the scale mesh here. Select it right there. Let's put the item cam on it so we see what it looks like. Let's go to the shader tree. Let's first of all select the yellow, green, and red. We're going to do this all at once. We're going to bring down the diffuse to 70%, the specular to 4, and reflections to 10 with Fennels at 25. And we're going to change each one to its individual color. So I'm going to go to red, then tone it down. Let's go to green. Press shift, and this will make it darker. Shift and left click on this area to make it darker. And then yellow, same thing. Now, the, the reason is I don't really want complete um, pure colors. Again, you want to make it more realistic. Now select again the scale material and bring the diffuse to 70. Specular 4, reflections to 5 and 15. Next up is the butter paper. Select that, move your item cam to the left. Now you'll notice there are two materials there. Let's select the steel cube. So this is a metallic surface, so you'll need to drop the diffuse all the way down to 5%. Pull the reflections up to 90 and Fresnel to 98. Put on blurry reflections and increase the roughness to 60%. And we're going to have a 40% of anisotropy for the workplace cube UV map. All right. Next up is the butter paper itself. Let's first add an image. It should be called butterpaper.jpg. Now you'll notice this is a one-sided polygon. It's a one-sided material at this point. So turn off anti-aliasing and choose the UV map should be butter paper. Workplace, butter paper all the way to the bottom. There we go. You'll notice that without any thickness, you know, you know, you have to have it either one side or you put the material to double sided here. Okay? So lower the specular to 3%, take the roughness up to 70%, and we're going to switch to the material trans properties and increase the subsurface to 100%. Okay. Now the paper is going to be turning white once you do that, which is not the effect we want, and it happens because the subsurface color is white. What we want to do is duplicate the fuse color and set this to subsurface color, and this should tone things down. But the paper still looks like cardboard. And that's because it, there's no thickness to the actual material, whereas the subsurface scattering distance is 5 millimeters. So take this down to 0. And this will give me a nice translucent effect. And to finalize the effect, we're going to add a 10% transparency amount to the actual paper, just to give it more of a translucent feel. And we're done with the butter paper. Moving on to the cup mesh, and you can move your camera there. And for this, 
material we want a porcelain like material so the first thing you want to do is change the specular to 4% and the reflections to 10 and 35 respectively on the frontal this will give you a nice shine to our surface and we're going to add a noise layer to break it up and it's going to break the evenness of the surface by adding this noise layer so bring down the scale first of all to 10 millimeters okay. right now it's set to diffuse color so you can see it and we're going to change this to bump map that's a bit harsh so bring the opacity down substantially to 1% it's just to give a hint of irregularity on the surface that's why it's so low now we're going to add a gradient here and this will give you the diffuse color of the cup and you set the input parameter to distance to Y locator and since the locator was added it will be situated at the pivot of this item which you can view if you need to so if I go to pivot you can see the pivot in the middle of the item So edit your gradient and we're going to put in a nice dark wine color. This is going to be at zero and you want to middle mouse button at around 50 millimeters and change this into a red, a darker red, not the same as the wine, the darker color where we're using. Press A to maximize the view on the on the graph editor. Let's click on the initial value here and bring this up to 10 millimeters just to tighten up the curve. This will squeeze the gradient of the cup color to that range and, and the effect of the up and down direction. So I'm happy with this. Let's move on to the markers and the marker cup right here. Go to the shader tree. Now you'll notice that the chrome has already been done for me so I don't have to worry about that. All I have to do is worry about the markers themselves and the reason for doing this there's no reason to create different materials if they are going to be the same in the properties and the scene so if I have chrome in more than one area no reason to do chrome 1, chrome 2 unless you're going to have actual substantial differences in the materials so go to the, mater the marker material choose image map let's load I forgot what the name was marker color Turn off anti-aliasing, and we're going to need to change the UV map to workplace marker cup. Oh, markers, sorry. There we go. This is simply an image painted in Modo, just to specify the colors on the tips of the markers. Let's take a look at that image. So here's the image. If I look at the UV map of those markers, so the polygons for the sides would be these ones, and the tips are in the colored spaces here. Sorry, I think I might have opened the image marker off screen. So as you can see here's where the tips are and this is where the normal markers are. So let's go back to the shader tree, select our material, let's set the diffuse down to 60% to bring that gray down and the colors. 
and bring the specular down as well to 4%, and then reflections 5 and 60. Now these values we're putting in for reflection amount and Fresnel. Once you do have to experiment a little bit to get a to get a feel of the reflection amount on surfaces. It'll be a good idea to get references for any surface that you're doing. These are rough estimates; they're not 100% accurate, but they look good in what we have right now. And there's no need to turn on blurry reflections here, since items gonna it's not gonna be in the close-up shot. If it was gonna be, I would probably turn it on specifically for that, just to maximize uh, my rendering speed. Now there's another there's another work area books layer, so another set of books, and this should be easy enough for me to, to fix up. Oops, not that camera. Item cam. Since this is going to be similar to the books I've already had done before, it makes a lot of sense to just to grab these duplicate them, stick them under workbooks, delete the old materials that are in there. Now what we need to do is replace the images that we have. So the diffuse color, go to load image. It's going to be workbooks color and living books roof or reflection should be workbooks ref and the living books bump should just be workbooks bump and that should do it for my books last thing we need to change the UV map to workplace books There we go. That seems to have put all my images correctly on my book mesh. So what I have left is the iMac sculpture and the orchid and we'll do that right after we save. So we'll call this workbooks And let's clean up some of the items in my tree, or my item list. Put them in textures, and save.